Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you guys a tutorial between two players, Abundum and Illumination here on Steps of War. Now, this tutorial is from the um, www.lucomputers.com sponsorship that I recently got. He opened up and, and let me know that I could do a couple tutorial videos. So if you have not checked out their website, go ahead and check out their website as a little thank you. Go ahead and take a look at their computers. If you're looking for a new StarCraft 2 computer that's going to be coming out in, on July 27th, go ahead and take a look at their systems. They have a couple pretty good systems and a couple laptops all over there. Now, I'm going to be focusing mo mainly on the Terran player in this particular instance, just more as a tutorial, trying to figure out what exactly he's trying to do. So Illumination and does seem to have a good understanding of the basic build orders. He wants to try to put down a supply depot over here on his front door very common tactic for Terran players to use a front door, making sure that Zealots and Zerglings aren't able to do any sort of run-by, as once Zerglings and Zealots are already in your base, it is very difficult for Marauders, for any of your uh, uh, any of your units to really use that rain damage as they're pretty fragile. Secondly, he will go ahead and then put down a, sub, uh, a barracks over here while getting the SCV, so he continues his SCV production fairly well. So uh, um, I really like this placement of this barracks. I can uh, go ahead and continue to put down this supply deep, this barracks here. The problem here is now in comes Illumination and he goes ahead and he builds his second supply depot already. And this is way, way, way too early for the second supply depot. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey, when do you build your supply depots? When do you build your pylons? When do you build your overlords? You build them when right before you need them. Um, otherwise, the supply depot is just going to sit there costing 100 minerals and not really doing anything for you. If you take a look at this, his food is currently sitting at 14 over 27, and he's not going to be breaking into that 18 food cap for quite some time. The refinery could have been down a little bit earlier, and he could have gotten this command center orbital command upgraded. He could have gotten an additional SCV, but you're going to see that he's sitting on 14 over 27 food and not really going to be able to use use the extra supply from the supply depot for a little while. Taking a look at Abundance Base just so you see his whole entire strategy. He's going for a single gateway cybernetics core forge. He's going to put a little bit of uh, put a cannon here to, in order to protect that position. Now also training up some marines as well, and now getting um, gas out of this refinery. Another thing that you're going to notice is that he's sitting on a, f on a fair amount of gas. So as soon as you get that mule, he also has three SCVs trained up. You, you rarely ever need three SCVs ever trained up. He could have gone ahead and put down an extra Vespine or an extra refinery to get earlier gas as he builds this factory. So this factory is now being laid down. And now he's finally into the 20 over 27, finally using the supply depot over here. His, his build order could have been a little bit more tight. Now, an, a lot of professional players in general just really practice their build orders over and over and over again. They want to make sure that they got, um, that, that build order is nearly perfect, that they utilize every second to gain a little bit of an advantage. We've seen how positioning in a matter of moments, in a matter of seconds, can really swing a battle one way or the other. Same thing with your build orders. If you can squeeze out an extra second or two out of your build orders, they will really give you a significant advantage. You're already going to see Illumination also putting down a second racks or a second factory here, and now also going to be putting down this, this tech lab. And whether or not you want to try to go for a 1-1-1 build, which is a barracks factory or and then a starport, or a double factory, and it doesn't. And either strategies are very viable, but you really want to make sure that you have enough of an economy to really uh, support it. Um, give me one moment. All right, gonna go ahead and continue the game. So yeah, getting down, a, getting down the second factory really early. He, he doesn't. I don't really ex ex expect Illumination to really be able to produce that many units out from here. The fact that he's producing a second factory while the first factory isn't even uh, producing any siege tanks is also another concern. Also another thing, take a look at his supply, seeing that 30 over 43 and also having a lot of idle or having an idle SCV, remember to always use F1. Illumination now also getting down this armory over here, so he's gonna be going for Thors. But still, we don't see any any production units. And if you look at the army tab, and, and I'm really curious on how Illumination, Illumination just really lucked out at this stage. He, all he did was used one single scan, and he saw that there was 
a, a gateway, two gateways, sorry, hold on, let's go ahead and head back over here, Illumination, he saw a forge and then and two gateways with the with the Cybernex core. If Abendum had tried to go for a four gate push with the weapons upgrade off of the forge, Illumination would not have been able to stop this attack whatsoever. He's been teching so hard get, and getting so many production buildings that he wouldn't really be able to attack it. This would be the perfect time to attack Illumination. So Illumination probably should have a couple units out in the field, perhaps even getting a tech lab down for Marauders. Marauders early portion of the game are very strong, especially with that concussive shell. Strong against Zealots, strong against Stalkers as well. The main composition of that early army, but Illumination lucks out, does not get attacked, and now has siege tanks to really protect against any sort of attack that is trying to move on out from Abundum. Abundum now moving out with four Stalkers and a Zealot. And now we see Illumination also taking, uh, building a command center in the back of his base. This command center is going to be lifted off over to here. Now whenever you do a lift off for your command center, remember to load it up with SCVs. Because it is going to be so hard to saturate this mineral line because you're, you're not going to be able to um, be able to just walk units over, you want to make sure that those, those SCVs are able to mine as quickly as possible. Now remember, after two SCVs per mineral patch, um, the third SCV doesn't mine nearly as efficiently. So that's why you want to transfer some of your SCVs over. Illumination sitting on 27, 27 SCVs. That means that he's currently five SCVs over over the two mark. So he could have just transferred some and loaded up the command center with some SCVs and then plopped back down over here to continue mining at a higher rate or even put down those early refineries for faster gas. Illumination now sitting fairly def uh, fairly in a defensive position here with two siege tanks, one Thor, and now that armory getting those weapons upgrade and now going even for a third factory. Whenever you go for that third factory, you know you're going to start getting... Um, I, okay, first of all, I don't agree with this third factory. I think going for an additional two racks with tech labs would have been a better choice. You can see how many minerals he's sitting on and how much gas he's sitting on, and he's trying to produce more and more um, more and more Thors. He's almost forced to produce Hellions out of necessity just because, hey, I have extra minerals, why not? Back over here, Abundum sitting with um, Stalkers and an Immortal, perhaps going to try to push on up sometime soon, and Illumination now going to go ahead and land this um, command center over here to start mining out of this position. Now, um, Illumination will start training up some SCVs and start gathering minerals first. He really should have started training up and or training SCVs and gathering gas in first, because he's still sitting um, so on so many minerals and only sitting on about 50 gas at this stage. Uh, especially trying to produce tanks and Thors out of three factories, he does not have the economy to really support it. Abundum now going to move on in with some stalkers and a and an immortal. Abundum's problem. He does not have an observer. If he had one observer costing 50 minerals and 100 gas, he would know that he cannot attack this position. Like Looking into there, he can see the, the shadow of those two siege tanks, and he should not be trying to push in. Back over here, we see Abundum also taking his, his natural expansion as well, only producing units off of a two gate and a robo bay. Perhaps should be getting more um, additional probes as well to try to get more Colossus. Those Colossus really are going to be what you're going to use in order to fight back. The Colossus has 350 hit points so and a range of 9. So with that range of 9, he'll at least be able to get within firing and attack range. Also, Stalkers, whenever you're going to be trying to um, attack... A, you, okay, first of all, Protoss players should never try to attack an entrenched Terran player from a high ground. It is just, especially if you do not have sight, this is just going to be a massacre waiting to happen. Back over here, we see Illumination now getting some additional gas um, um, in order from this particular occasion, but he's not um, upgrading this to an Orbital Command yet. The Orbital Command, getting the, that additional 50 energy opens up for additional scans. Right now, Illumination is very, very susceptible to any sort of Dark Templar push because he only has two Orbital Commands. And Siege Tank's now going to go ahead and continue to blast and Abundum just sacrificing units here. And this is just a suicide move. Not quite sure what he's thinking. Siege Tank's able to attack and, and just destroy a lot of these units. And you can see how much damage Abundum took in terms of his whole entire mineral count. He does have a single pylon over here and now warping in more units. But Abundum also getting into a Stargate. It doesn't feel like Abundum is really that focused in terms of his strategy. He doesn't know what he wants to do. 
going in for Stargate and going in for double Stargate, whenever I see a double Stargate, you should also start researching the weapons upgrade at the Cybernetics Core if you're a Protoss player. You know that the Terran player is going very, very heavy mech. You saw the Siege Tanks, you saw the Thors, you gotta assume that the Terran player is getting those um, upgrades and as you, in fact you can, he is getting the level 2 weapons upgrade and the level 1 armor upgrades. So your air units are not going to be able to counteract those stores nearly as easily. Stay tuned for part 2 of this replay, um, of this tutorial between Illumination and Abundum here on Steps of War.